Hello there! What is going on everyone? Today we're going to be revisiting the Nebulon B for Star Wars Armada in the year 2020. This is a ship that has come a long way over the past year with a lot of new expansions, a lot of new cards, a lot of new game mechanics that make this ship perform a lot differently now than it used to. So I've been revisiting ships since my initial ship breakdowns because I think it's time to take a closer look at them now. If you are new here, there is a new round of the giveaway going on right now. You can enter to win a $25 Amazon gift card. All you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. It's as simple as that. So let's talk about the Nebulon B. So this ship came with the core set. It was one of those ships a lot of people used at first and got kind of sick and tired of because, well, it was pretty weak on the sides, didn't have redirect, and, uh, you know, people eventually moved on and started playing other ships as more ships came out. The Nebula and B kind of sank further and further into very, very narrow list designs. It was basically Yavaris or Bust, and, you know... That's fine. Yavaris has seen some changes. It's uh, still strong, but not quite as broken as it used to be. And uh, now there's a couple of new mechanics that I think are going to make this ship a lot more viable. I have long since tried to make jokes about running a Nebulon Akbar list. And um, in doing that, kind of what started as initially as a joke, I come to realize the Nebulon B is not as bad as a lot of people seem to think it is. Not to say that it's a great ship, especially for an Akbar type of you know broadside list, but it did kind of it was a great way to explore the strengths that the ship does have. And uh, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I used to do with it, but um, we're gonna explore some of the titles and we've got a new title in Rebellion in the Rim. Wave eight brought a lot of new things. So uh, yeah, well, the basic ship is you know we've got our support refit which is the more common one at only uh, at only 51 points. The support refit is the standard Nebulon. It's the cheaper version. It's got a single blue die for its, uh, uh, for its ship version. And it's got, you know, three red in the front. And it's two, two command, one squadron, three engineering. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's a great ship. Uh, I really like it. It's, it's got, it can go speed three. It has a little bit of maneuverability at speed three. It's got two clicks on the end there. One of the things I think that makes this ship great is it's got two braces. There's not that many ships that just come with two braces. Um, that makes it naturally, you know, the resilient against the single accuracy, stopping your ability to cut damage in half. Brace is the second best defense token generally, you know, with of course scatter being the first, and almost nobody has scatter. So brace is usually the king of defense tokens. It's the most widely available ships uh, token to ships that you know generally want to be able to brace. And well everybody wants to be able to brace if they can. So having two of those is a big deal. The evade has also gotten a little bit better. It, while it does have a single evade uh, the evade is now much, much better because there's a new type of attack called extreme range that the onager can make, or potentially other future ships will be able to make too. Any, any, any attack that happens beyond long range is now at extreme range, and evade has been modified or edited to say that if you use evade at extreme range, the default effect cancels two dice now. So evade is now in the metagame a little bit more important than it used to be because people can attack you from even farther away. So evade will do a lot of stuff, can potentially be better than brace, depending on the type of attack that you face. If somebody rolls two red dice and gets two doubles, well, you just canceled four damage instead of just two with brace or something like that. So you can do an awful lot of nasty stuff. Um, so I really like the defense token setup of this ship. The, the biggest weakness of this ship is that really it's only got one shield on the sides and no redirect, right? So it, generally when you get shot on the sides, which are big, big, wide side arcs, you kind of go, start going down fast. Fortunately, you've got things to mitigate against that. A lot of people think, oh, well, once you get a Nebulon B in the side arcs, it's dead. I'm here to tell you it's not necessarily dead. It's no different than if you had, you know, a, a, another five hull ship um, that was just, its shields happen to be low, right? Um, You've still got two braces. You still have a shield. You know, somebody's going to hit you maybe six damage or whatever. You're going to brace it to three, you know, lose one shield, and then you're going to take two to hull. You still have three hull left. Something like that. You know, usually you can survive a shot on the sides and still be okay. But it does help if you have a little bit more going on. But uh, 
considering it's a relatively cheap ship and a small ship, I think for its point cost, I think it performs quite well. The fact that it can take a punch and live. You usually don't see Nebulons one-shot it. For a 50-point ship that has the ability to basically say, no, you can't one-shot me, I think that's pretty huge. Um, obviously, it can be one-shotted if it's over an extremely... Like, if you get a, a Kuat at range 1 at close range to your side, yeah, you might get one-shotted. But for most attacks, especially a ship that's good at approaching at long range, considering it has an evade and lots of red dice, you're usually not going to get one-shotted. Now, uh, we, we're going to look over at the... Uh, Escort version. The main difference we get here on the Escort frigate is that the cost jumps up to 57 points. Uh, we're going to gain uh, an extra squadron ability. So instead of you know 213 for command squadron engineering, we're actually 223, and we gain an extra anti squadron die. So you're actually gaining a lot of different stuff. A whole battery armament, uh, even the, with the anti squadron. And uh, uh, you know an extra squadron ability is significant for only six more points. So uh, I think that's uh, you know a pretty good boost for for what you're getting. And this is going to be uh, pretty significant because of the fact that there's new upgrades that I think specifically work really well with this particular ship variant. Now this used to be the ship that only uh, that basically people would run, and they would run it with the Yavaris title because Yavaris lets your squadrons attack twice. This was pretty much the standard, uh, you know, ship model that when people would run Nebulons, and a lot of times people did because Yavaris is a good carrier, people would run something like this. And it was very common to do something like uh, like Flight Commander and, uh, you know, even once upon a time it was Fighter Coordination Team. However, this was changed a little bit so where Yavaris will not allow them to, if they didn't move during your activation, they basically, they, you can't have somebody move and then attack twice with Fighter Coordination Team with this particular combo. It's still not a terrible combo because, hey, Fighter Coordination Team still helps people move, but it's now, it's no longer like the, the default. Um, so, this is still a good build, probably always will be, but it's not now your only option. Uh, so I'm going to explore some of the other options and some of the new things we've got. Um, other ways that you could have run, uh, you know, Nebulons in the past were Salvation was kind of popular. Uh, it was one of the first titles that I think I ever ran with a Nebulon because it lets your crits count as doubles out of the front, which is kind of cool. The problem I used to run into is that that front arc was pretty tricky to line up. And... While I do, uh, you know, love the option of a really huge, like that gamble for a really huge shot, uh, it was a little tricky. Now, this one became really cool once we came out with uh, Sato, or Sato. Uh, Sato was uh, awesome because you could roll potentially two black dice, or maybe even three black dice if you concentrate fire, out of your front arc. And then if you got the crit hit, you actually had three damage on that black die, uh, which was super, super cool. It wasn't the easiest thing to always make work, but when it did work, it was gorgeous. So that's something really fun. Uh, and I love the idea of running Sato with Salvation. I think that's a very, very cool way to do it. Uh, one, of the, one of the problems, though, is that you can't get gunnery teams on this ship. So you can't end up firing twice out of that front arc. So it, while it makes it a strong front arc shot, it's limited in that you can only make that shot once. Unless, of course, you put advanced gunnery on that ship, which I don't think I would want to do. But... It's an option. It'd be kind of kind of interesting. It'd be kind of uh, outside of the box. So those were the most two. The only other title we had kind of uh, for for years and years was the Redemption, which is now one of my favorite titles. But I used to hate this title because I just never wanted to use it. At first off, it was crazy expensive. It's eight points for this title, and it just you know gives people one extra engineering point. Well, that never really all seemed that, that great. I think it's a lot better now, and there's a couple of reasons where I really like to use it. So that's going to be my launching port point to talk about the first really, really awesome new upgrade that I want to talk about today. Uh, when we look at the upgrade slots for the Nebulon, you know, it's got, obviously, you can put your commander on there, you can put a title on there, but you're basically you're looking at officer, support officer, and turbo laser. Problem with Nebulon Bs a lot of times is that turbo laser upgrades weren't always mandatory. I would run turbo laser upgrade. I would run enhanced armament if I was running Akbar Nebulons because that would effectively make their side arc better than the front arc if I could manage it. And I liked that idea, um, but that's kind of silly, right? Not a lot of people want to do that. So the other upgrade that 
you know, that people would sometimes run is a support team. You didn't always have to run it, but there's a new upgrade called Auxiliary Shields Team. It comes in Rebellion in the Rim. This one, I think, is an amazing, amazing upgrade to run on a Nebulon, especially a couple of Nebulons. If you want to run, maybe you want to run two or three Nebulons in your build. Well, this addresses one of their biggest weaknesses, um, and it can go on other ships as well, but I think it works really, really well on a Nebulon. It says when you're doing an engineering command, you may treat the maximum hull values of your left and right shields by, by one higher than they currently are. So basically you can bump your left and right shields up to two when you are either restoring shields or transferring shields to those sides. Basically what this means is, um, what I, and, and why I like it with redemption, is if I got four engineering points, I can just bump my left and right up to four on the very first turn. Now, your engineering value on the Nebulon is only three, so with Redemption, it does, if you have Redemption in your fleet or on your ship, because Redemption can help itself, it effectively gives you an engineering value of four. So when you do an engineering command, you're going to be able to, if you do that first turn, you're just going to be like, okay, I'm now three in the front, two on the sides, and two in the rear. That's a lot better shields, uh, especially considering you don't have redirect. And that's uh, just, it's a lot better. I mean, the difference between two and one is literally only one, but it just, it feels so much better to have two shields on the side. Your weakest side is now not that weak. It's only one less than your front. So it just, it feels a lot better to start the game out that way. And that has definitely saved several Nebulons for me, running Auxiliary Shields team and just doing engineering first turn. Don't have to worry about it. Normally people run nav first turn, but now you just, you just don't have to. And it's, in, in Redemption, we'll let all of your Nebulons do it. So if you want to run a couple of, uh, of Nebulons with Auxiliary Shields team, you can totally do that. So I like that for Redemption. I feel like Redemption helps out a lot of other really tanky builds now too, with the Starhawk being out there, which is not that great. Um, but any other, you know, any other ship with there's new MC titles that have ways of getting extra extra engineering points too. Like you can really have. I think there was some builds that I've come up with where I was getting like eight engineering points on a flagship uh, so i'm just like well, four more shields back every turn on an mc80 you know you like you can i think you can even get more than that but redemption is a really fun uh way to do that and it does it for your whole fleet too so if you have a bunch of small ships especially nebulons it works really really well with other nebulons because they want that one extra point particularly because of Auxiliary Shields team. So I really like that ability. Now, if you don't have Redemption, you can still use Auxiliary Shields team. Uh, you, what you'll do is you spend your three points, you put, get one new shield on the side, and then your third point, you just transfer maybe one from the rear to the other side. And if you get like a token later on, you can just use that one to get the one on the back, back, no problem. But you know, there's, you can still do it. It's just, it's just a whole lot easier with Redemption because you just do that engineering command. First turn, set it and forget it. And then you can set nav or concentrate fire, whatever else you need for the rest of the round. Okay, so those are the original titles. We also got a new title with Rebellion in the Rim. And that's a really cool title too, by the way. And it's called Vanguard. Now, I didn't initially go crazy over Vanguard. And it wasn't until Wave 8 came out that I started to really appreciate Vanguard. Because this title does two different things. And it's only four points too, by the way. Very cool. Um, you gain, an, uh, you gain a, an upgrade. You gain a weapons team upgrade in your upgrade bar. And I also, at the start of the first round, you may replace one of your defense tokens with the redirect defense token. Now, this one I was not initially crazy about because you didn't gain a redirect token, right? You didn't gain one, you replaced one. So, like, well, what do I replace? Um, because, honestly, there's a big part of me that does not ever want to touch the, the second brace. Now, if the ship did have brace, redirect, evade, that would be fine. But now, all of a sudden, you're vulnerable to accuracy, and you don't have option for ECM. So now, you're all of a sudden, you, you got some new defense, but now you're more likely to potentially be one-shotted. So I wasn't a fan of that. So I think one of the ideal ways to maybe run this, and of course, it depends. And it's something that you can do at the start of the first round. So you don't even have to do it. You don't have to make the decision when you're building the fleet. You can see what your opponent's running first. But I like the idea of swapping out the evade for a redirect in a lot of cases because this allows you to get closer you're you're no longer a uh, long range ship and you now want to work a little bit closer you don't have the evade so you're not really as protected at long range so now with two braces and a redirect you have a lot more survivability and a lot more ability to make that front shield work for you if somebody tries to shoot you on the side uh, so that much is great. And maybe even make those rear shields work for you. I think the Nebulon B is the only ship that has more shields in its rear than it does on 
one of its side <laughs> zones. So it's just it's just unique in that regard. So it allows you to put those shields to work for you, which normally Nebulons couldn't do that. But the other thing that's interesting is that you gain the heavy weapons option. I'm sorry, the weapons team option. Now, weapons team wasn't always that great. Uh, we did get new, one new upgrade, uh, local fire control, which I'll talk about in a minute. But it wasn't always that great. Now, there's a couple of things that were nice in here that I'm thinking, oh, this would be great, like a uh, gunnery team. Oh, I could run that with Salvation. Well, no, I can't because um, if I were to put gunnery team on this, well, I'm not going to get that crit counts as two in my front because it's a whole different title. And if I take the different title, then I lose Vanguard and thus lose the slot. So a lot of the things that I would want to have done with weapons team didn't exactly work with Vanguard because Vanguard was consuming the, uh, you know, the, the title slot. Now, Gunnery Team, you can still do it, um, and it even can work in an Akbar Nebulons list if you wanted to do Enhanced Armament or something crazy like that. But that's not really that great. So um, it wasn't until recently that I actually had a, a really great use for this title, and that was with Local Fire Control. So Local Fire Control uses the Weapons Team, and this is basically how you get Salvo. And this is what makes Vanguard really nice for a Nebulon, because this one, at, after you deploy, you must replace one of your defense tokens with the Salvo defense token. Now this definitely, for me, is still replacing the Evade in most battles. Now if I am facing an Onager, I might consider going with, you know, leaving the Evade. That is a distinct possibility. Um, not a guarantee, but it's a possibility. I might want to do that. Um, but the problem is, you also have this whole issue of, like, well, I also can replace one of my defense tokens with a for, a, for a, a, a redirect. And so if you're running local fire control and Vanguard, you're going to have a couple of choices to make because one is a must, one is a may. The only one that you must replace is you have to get a salvo. So you at least have to lose one of those tokens and then get a salvo with it. Um, you, if you don't, you know, if you're facing a build that you don't think you'll really need the redirect, then you don't have to worry about it. Or you could end up with, okay, well, I'll replace the evade with salvo and I'll replace one of the braces with a redirect. And now I've got salvo, brace, and redirect or something like that. It gives you a lot of control over the defense tokens that you're going to have. But the thing that makes Salvo so great on a Nebulon B is the fact that you've got two red in your rear arc. So even if you lose your evade, uh, now you can fire back at long range with two red dice, which may be the same amount of dice that came after you. Um, it's, it's actually a pretty solid ship to be able to Salvo with because Salvo only uses your rear printed arc. Uh, at long range, there's not many ships that are going to... I don't think there's any ships that have three red dice in their rear arc. So you're just as strong as anybody else in your rear arc and actually stronger than many. So your salvo at long range is going to be quite good. Now, there are a lot of ships. There are quite a few ships that do have three dice in their rear arc. Not that many, but you're definitely one of the cheapest ships that can take salvo and do it fairly well. So uh, I like that with the Nebulon with Vanguard for its title. Now, of course, you can also run auxiliary shields team still especially if you've got uh, a salvation else not a salvation sorry uh, if you've got a, a redemption elsewhere in your build uh, and still do that engineering first turn kind of helps make up if you decide not to go with the redirect well you've still got the extra shields there anyway and you can always queue up an engineering command later on and just you know just move those to move those shields around uh, and to make up for the redirect but I just I'd love the double brace and I don't know if I'd you know, if there's too many options for me to give that up. Now, we did get a lot of new officers since I've done my last ship breakdowns. If you are looking to make the ship more tanky, there's, you know, it's not just Lando anymore. You've also got Major Durlin uh, and, and and things like that. But um, I think there's also the Kirsta Agate officer that you might want to consider putting in there if, if you are running uh, something like Salvo because, hey, she can get you a different critical effect and you can get one of your defense tokens back. So if you're running Vanguard Local Fire Control and you decide you do want to have only a single brace and a single redirect, she can help you kind of maybe be able to brace a little bit more often if you don't get the accuracy. So that is pretty cool. Um, but the other thing that I want to talk about that I really like is the Turbo Laser upgrade that I think is maybe the best Turbo Laser upgrade for a Nebulon. And, well... Link Turbo Laser Towers is good. That's not the one. Uh, and I'll come back and I'll talk about Link Turbo Laser Towers. But the, the one that I'm looking for is for a Nebulon B Escort Frigate. This is our more expensive version. And for this one, it's Heavy Fire Zones. I think Heavy Fire Zones is great for the Nebulon B. Um, 
you got such a cheap ship here, and you're going to get two red dice at long range against squadrons. Now, every time I talk about heavy fire zones, there's always somebody in the chat that's like, is that confirmed? Is, is heavy fire zones really do that? Yes, it is. That's what it does. Not allowed to ask questions about it. That's exactly what it does. If heavy fire zones was just red dice at medium range, it would have been a, a, a card with one sentence on it. It would have been done. No, the whole point of it modifying your armament is the fact that it's letting you say, I'm going to do a squadron attack out of this arc, and now I'm going to be able to you know, get all of these guys with red dice. So that's awesome. Yeah, so two red dice at long range is really good, and it makes for a very cheap filler, fi uh, filler ship to, you know, especially when you're going light on squadrons and you want to be able to get them at range maybe two times before they are in range to hit you. I really love this. I love this as an option. I don't think it's overpowered. Red dice are, honestly, you have less of a chance of getting a hit than blue dice, but you have a much wider arc. And especially with those side arcs, I feel like this is actually a kind of a cool option to run with Salvation. I feel like it's a cool option to run with Salvation because your your side arc is just so wide. Uh, you know, you're going to probably try to keep everybody in your front arc so this way you can get that. But, but as forces will move around and try to get out of your front arc, um, you know, they usually keep the squadrons close to the flagships. And so, you know, I feel like it, this is kind of a way for you to hedge your bets just a little bit. But I really like heavy fire zones just on this ship because you're getting two red at long range, which is more uh, than, you know, just about any other ship, especially in this particular category. There are other ships that can also take heavy fire zones, but this is just a great way to do that. So I'm a big fan. I'm a definitely a big fan. Uh, but now, the other the other new turbo laser that's also pretty good here is linked turbo lasers. This one lets you re-roll a red in your attack pool every time you're attacking. And also, if you're going to attack only one squadron uh, during your first squadron you're going to attack, or at least the first time you're going to attack, if you want to just say, you know what, I'm just going to roll two extra dice on this one squadron, you can do that. Um, this one, it's actually great if you've got double arc, and you've only got one squadron in this arc, and you just... All right, I'm going to double squadron. I'm going to double flak this first guy. Boom, 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 everything. And then the second arc uh, as normal. But uh, but no, I'm a big fan of Link Turbo Laser Towers in general, uh, which works w fairly well on here. The like, Nebulons, though, I usually have not been a big fan of putting too many Turbo Laser upgrades on. I've sometimes run Salvation with Spinal Armament, but then you're putting so many points into hoping you get that narrow shot. It doesn't always work. So... I also want to talk about commanders because I think the Krista Agate commander is such a cool new commander that is worth talking about possibly on a Nebulon. I think Krista Agate gives you something very cool because he's adding a whole another defense. So, granted, maybe you're going to run Vanguard and you want to have you know an auxiliary shields team so you can get that redirect. We can always run another one. We can run another one with with Krista Agate. And then put Waylix Blissix as your officer. He's usually, a lot of people are saying he's going to be stapled to her. And I can certainly understand that. Because now you can get a redirect here as well. Um, although at the same time, I really do like Salvo. For the Nebulon, you got two red. So you might be can, you might be tempted to put Salvo on there. And that's really going to depend on the, the build that you're facing. But Salvo is definitely an option here. Um, Salvo is also useful for anti-squadron. Salvo is probably slightly better with the Nebulon B Escort Frigate rather than the support refit. Just in case you have to use it against a squadron, you're going to get double the dice. So kind of like Salvo in this particular version. I think a lot of these new use cases are leading me towards wanting to run the Nebulon B Escort Frigate instead of the support refit because of the extra blue uh, for the first in the squadron armament. And in case I do want to use it as a carrier, I just I like the the escort frigate a little bit better now. Certainly a lot more than I used to because it doesn't have to only run on Yavaris. Uh, so there is that. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot of other um, commanders out there that are um, really like that. I really want to talk about right now um, that have changed. Right? Uh, we've talked a little bit about like Mon Mothma is still good on this ship. She's you know. That's fine. It gives you something that you can actually you know get into close range a little bit more. Leia is the same as Leia's always been. Um, Riken is okay on this. There's not you know there's no specific synergies that really need to work here. Maydeen is is good pretty much all around, and the, the Nebulon B can benefit from that, especially with the lack of any yaw at speed three's uh, first click. So that is particularly helpful. 
Uh, Dodonna is always good, especially with Salvation. I'll skip over Kraken. I'll come back to him in a minute. Garmbel Iblis, one of my least favorite commanders, but Schmitty has made him work very, very well and made me kind of say, all right, maybe I'll revisit Garm at some point. Sato does work very well with the Nebulon. Um, not perfect because your side arc shots only have the one red, but uh, you know you can build out ne um, Nebulons to work well with Sato. Radis, uh, I wouldn't put Radis on a Nebulon. Um, I, I wouldn't be crazy about it. It's possible. I, I would be less likely to want to do that, but it's an option. It's it's if you're looking for the cheapest ship that can probably survive being one shotted, it's definitely an option. Although I'm more of a fan of putting Radus on a bigger, uh, chunkier ship. But then again, that gives you less points to warp somebody else in. You can't warp in a Starhawk, but you can warp in an MC75 or, an, or an MC80, and that's really cool. Now, Akbar people always say is terrible. I like running Akbar on the Nebulons with enhanced armament. Gives you two red and a blue on the sides. Uh, this means even obstructed long range shots, you'll still be able to activate Akbar, add two extra dice, you still get three for an obstructed shot. Um, so I really like that. And if you're medium range, not obstructed, then you're gonna be rolling uh, five, possibly six with a concentrate fire uh, out of both of your sides. And the other thing that makes Nebulons really good now too, is the fact that we've got a Super Star Destroyer. So if you wanted to run Akbar uh, and you just you bring your Nebulon up and it's very very easy to double arc double side arc a Super Star Destroyer. You can double side arc any large ship. It's a little trickier to do it against uh, normal ships, but against a large I guess a huge ship like a Super Star Destroyer, that thing is so long you you can do it at medium range. I think you can even double arc at at long range. Uh, so, you know, it's it's potentially possible if you're right smack in the middle at just the right angle. But yeah, you don't have to get that close to be able to double arc. So if you can double Akbar and Nebulon with enhanced armament uh, onto a Super Star Destroyer, that's really, really satisfying. And I think it's kind of like one of those gaming achievements. So General Kraken is the one I want to talk about last. He is a little bit more useful now as a potential commander if you're committed to running at speed 3. Uh, and of course you probably have to be doing nav a lot more to make sure you're not bumping into things uh, but yes he the the reason is because of the obstruction first off that will help even your side shots you know having a you know removing a die right off the bat is very helpful because then if you keep your evade or maybe you have different defense tokens depending on what you've decided to keep and, and what you've decided to give up um, you know your evade can potentially cancel a die so you've already can't, you're kind of already removing two dice with general Kraken so that's kind of cool but of course, you're gonna have to stay at speed three. The reason why Kraken is so much cooler now is because you have Ramadi for the Empire, who's gonna say, oh, but if you're obstructed, I get an extra die and don't remove a die. Well, unless of course it's a card effect that's causing the obstruction and only a card effect. So if you can steer clear of actual obstructions, basically like Ramadi wants to shoot through an asteroid and have the debris also add to the damage. So he doesn't lose a die when he's shooting through things, he's adding a, a die instead. So if you can steer clear of obstructions, but also stay at speed three, you're going to completely negate Ramadi's uh, ability. And on top of that, you just be, you know, that's good. It, Kraken's good, going to be good against any fleet if you can manage it. So that's also another cool thing. Uh, the only downside to somebody like Kraken is if your opponent is running the quad battery turrets, which is when they're attacking somebody who's going faster than you, they get an extra blue die. So that is something worth thinking about. I think a gate is one of my favorite commanders for Nebulons. Uh, also still Dodonna is very, very good. Um, but I think Kraken might be worth another look. And since the Nebulons can go speed three and actually have respectable yaw while using speed three, I think that's something to keep in mind. All right, guys, so that's like some of my thoughts on revisiting the Nebulon. I have been using them in some of my Rebel fleets lately. I really enjoy them. And by the way, I'm using uh, Ryan Kingston's Fleet Builder behind me to kind of just uh, show you guys some of these cards and uh, have some fun with them. But I enjoy the Nebulon. I hope you guys do too. I'll put a link to Ryan Kingston's Fleet Builder in the description below just in case you're new to the channel and haven't seen it before. Uh, but that's all I've got, guys. I'll talk to you guys later. If you have any questions about the Nebulon B, you can hop into my Discord. You can ask. There's links for social media as well as Discord down below and also to my Patreon, which I would not be able to create content without. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. Patrons are amazing and definitely help make this all possible. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you today. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, have a great day.